In this tutorial, I'm going to briefly introduce the concept of dynamic response templating um, and show how it can be used to take values from the request and use them in the response to create the, the illusion of many items of data being served by an API when actually we've only got one stub doing it. I'm going to start by creating a new stub as usual. And let's assume that we're making some sort of contact manager API and want to be able to retrieve contact by ID where the ID is a, a variable in the URL path. This stub gets single contact. Get is fine as a method. Switch to matching on path templates. And we'll say that the relative of this form, so contact ID is the ID. If we weren't using dynamic response templating, would be to add a specific path parameter and then only match uh, one specific contact ID and have a canned response for that ID. But what we're going to do here instead is we're going to leave the path parameter blank. And instead, we're going to create a, a dynamic response that will be valid regardless of what value we put into the, the request URL. So I've enabled dynamic response templating. So this just enables the handlebars templating base system for response headers and the response body. And I've set a content type header to application JSON, so it will serve a JSON response. And then I'm going to create an example of a very basic contact record, which is just going to have an ID and a first name and a last name. Now it's very common for API responses to have an ID field, which matches the ID and the, the URL path. So in order to sort of create this illusion of many records, the obvious thing to, to do is to take the ID from the, the URL path in the incoming request and use it in our response body some quotes around it and so the, these uh, triple brackets so this is handlebars template syntax um, the triple brackets versus double brackets just means don't attempt to escape the content just re repeat it kind of exactly as it is so the templating system has a request model that's fed into it so when a, a request is made the, the request is sort of broken out into a model and made available to the templating engine and then you can use parts of it and you can process parts of it in building up the response so in this instance, we're going to say request.path. And when we've used the path template, so when we, we have named values within the uh, named variables within the path template, we can address these by name uh, in the response template. So in this case, it's called contact ID. So here, rather than putting a fixed value in there, we're putting this template value in, and that should copy the value from the request, you know, whatever we send, just for good measure some other values in. So now if I save this and open up the test request maker, uh, you'll see that it's pre-filled the values with uh, the method get, because that's what we used and contacts. That's just defaulted to zero for the value here, but I put any value in here that I like. And when I hit send, as we can see, the value that I put in the, in the, the URL path is the one that gets used in here. So yeah, indeed I can bash the keys a bit and place another value in there. And that's it in a nutshell. That's how to use dynamic response templating to copy simple values from the request to the response and to produce the illusion of, of many records being served from a systems API.